right, all right, all right, and all right. Let me see. Where am I? Let's get this thing started. Let's see here. Hey, Lo. Yes, truly, Diva. Larie is in the house. Now, I'm trying to get my, my people. Oh, they are already here. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. And welcome. What are we talking about today? We're talking about history. History. And history. The main topic. Ephraim, welcome. The main topic we're dealing with. We're dealing with the original slaves of the Americas. The original slaves of America. So we're going to get on it today. I want to welcome everybody. Let me turn off my remix. I, I can't find the remix. Let me find the remix. One moment. Here we go. Yeah. I really do. I really do love this song. I always vibe to it. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for joining. And thank you for joining. I'm yours truly, Diva. We're going to get on this thing today. We're, we're getting into history. History. All right. I want to go into this because we talked about this in a couple of our previous sessions. Now, I want to, you know, it's, I, it's been a while. I was, uh, I've been working. Working, working, and working, getting my clients together and situated with their taxes. So I've been working, um, but I'm glad to be back. You all, we have an ebook. An ebook. You can get this ebook. Uh, so I want to invite you to get this ebook. Uh, you can go to find the link in the bio. All right. What is this ebook, Diva? Well, it's got you know all the information we deal with from the beginning of understanding who you are, how to free yourself from this matrix. So, of course, we got our table of contents, but you know we got to have the maxims of law and the universal laws in here, all right? We've also got a lot of information to give you insight on what they are, how to use them, uh, what they're about, all right? We've got the actual full set of maxims of law in here. Uh, there's This goes into contract law, contract writing, the beginnings. That's why it's called the beginner book, all right? What a contract is. Showing you how there's contracts that you've been signing in this dimension, what we call our third dimension, and didn't recognize it. Well, we go into that in this book. Uh, here is the vibratory frequency chart. All right, and it goes into more information about our courses that we've had and that we have uh, online for you and that are coming up. So you want to get this book. This is an ebook. This is the physical form. Now the ebook is $14.99. You can get the physical form for $29.99. And with this physical book, we have an actual laminated copy uh, along with the book. You get an actual laminated copy of the hierarchy of laws, a laminated copy of the universal laws, as well as a laminated copy of the vibratory frequency chart. So these, these is, this is a really great buy. These things you need to put on your window, put them on your wall, put them on your mirror, put them everywhere because these need to be in your face at all times so that you recognize how to walk in this dimension. This is the beginner book helping you to understand who you are in this dimension. Very powerful. $14.99 for the ebook, $29.99 for the physical book, and you get all of these laminated copies along with it. This is worth it. All right, now, uh, I want to get into this today. I want to get into this today. We're talking about history. I've been going through this because one of my big required sessions for this season is history and self-mastery. Don't forget, if you want to enroll for the university, 
uh, you can go to unauniversity.com and enroll there, all right? And we're going to give you a free consultation uh, so we can talk to you about coming into the university and understanding what it is, all right? So that is coming up on the 16th of April, all right? 16th of April, we go three weeks, uh, eight, to eight weeks out, all right? Eight weeks out, starting the 16th of April, we've got uh, hit, hit, actually Back to Basics, which is one of our most requested courses back to basics that's showing you how to put yourself under trust terry 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 welcome thank you for joining us all right so back to basics you want to be uh a part of that if you have uh you know you, you want to get yourself under trust you want to make sure you clear up all these issues and your debts you need to take that course back to basics, okay? We go through it. We make sure that by the end of that course, you know how to stand, where to file your documents, who to file your documents with, why you're filing your documents over here, how to stand on your documents when you have them. All of that is important. So you want to join the seminar. Go to unauniversity.com. That starts on the 16th. That is Sunday. It runs every Sunday, eight weeks out, all right? The next session we have is on Mondays. It's called... History and Self Mastery. This is the one I'm going into tonight a little bit, uh, where we deal with the history and the mastery of self. All right, understanding who you are and how to master you. Because once you master you, then everything else has to come into alignment with you. All right, so that's history and self mastery. That's going to be on Mondays and that runs eight weeks out. All right. Now our Wednesday class is an intermediate class. It's called Business Asset Management. In this course, we go into your umbrella corporation, all right, how to put, develop your umbrella corporation and really act under your own jurisdiction. You're going to pull everything under that umbrella corporation, your house, your car, your business, your children, and everything else. You're going to pull it under that corporation and you're going to learn how to act under your uh your jurisdiction as your own nation, all right? So that is our season, all right? Those are our three courses. Once again, it's going eight weeks out. So if you want to join and be a part of it, I want you to send a message. Go to UNA University, send a message. For those of you all who are on uh, TikTok, you can find the link in the bio, or you can go to UNA University. My people in uh, YouTube, hello. I love y'all. All right, so let's get into this now. We're getting into some history today. And I don't have a lot of time because I got a session to go into, but let me get into this about history. Now, I went into this last, a couple of sessions ago, and because it's very important for us to understand what went on in history for the simple fact that once you have that knowledge, then it helps you understand and build on what the laws are and where they came from. Now, I also want to go into that because uh, there are a lot of things, of course, that have been hidden from us with respect to what actually went on in history. And one of those things is that who the original slaves were. Now, I'm going to introduce some terms. Some of you all are already familiar. Uh, some of you all are not. But I want you to go and look up the term slave and why it's important because there are so many terms that we have been taking on and we don't recognize where they came from. So when you do your research, look up slave and then etymology. We want to find the etymology, not just the definition. And thank you all for liking and sharing and, and loving and hearting and all that other stuff. Thank you for the hearts. I want you all to go and find uh, the etymology of the term slave. And it is derived from the term Slavic or Slovakian. Those were light-skinned people. Now, this is not a diss to my Albion friends. I love y'all. Thank you, Kojo, for the rose. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's very important that you go and look up the etymology, all right? Because, again, these things are, are hidden from us. But, again, I'm not uh, dissing my light-skinned friends, my Albion friends. But I need to know the truth to come out. And I'm letting y'all know as we get into this history, uh, none of it's pretty. Not for any of us. Not for melanated people. Not for Albions. Not for women. Not for men. Not for anybody. It's not pretty. So uh, I'm going to give you the facts of what happened uh, from a, an etymological standpoint. 
from a historical standpoint, from a legal standpoint. We're going to introduce all of this uh, information so that you can go and look it up for yourself. But getting back to this, I want you all to go and look up the term uh, slave. And you're going to find that it comes from the term Slavic or Slovakian. Now, some people go, well, we know they were indigenous servants. No, they were full-fledged slaves. Uh, and they were being kidnapped by Moors. Now, when you look up the term Moor, it's going to be hard for you to find out what a Moor is. But a Moor is basically uh, someone who did a job on a ship. Now, they're going to tell you, oh, they was black -a -moors, or they were Why you got to have it black -a -moor if they was black? That's a, a, what's this, a redundant statement. You don't need the term black if they were black. No, they was, uh, the term more didn't have anything to do with skin color. It had to do with a job done on a ship. And the people who were doing this kidnapping of these slaves or Slavs in Slovakia were melanated people coming from the lands known as Morocco, Tunis, Algiers, Montezuma, Tripoli, Britain. Yeah, they were melanated. And so were the British they were melanated people. When you hear the term European, the original Europeans were melanated people. All right? And so this is why we have to, we're going to catch up on these terms and understand what they actually meant, where they came from. European did not have to do with light-skinned people. It had to do with people coming from the land, uh, the lands over there that today are known as Africa today are known as Middle East, today is known as Asia, but back then, all of that was Europe, all it was Asia, and then it all was Ethiopia at another point. Somebody changed the names, all right? And so we've got to start recognizing what happened. So I tell, I tell you all this, and I'm going to tell you again, it's not just light-skinned Albions who are lying to you about what went down in history, there are some melanated people lying to you as well. And we also go into, you know, everybody's wanting to take on, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, they just want to say us and we and them and they, and they're not a, recognizing the fact that just because all of these people are dark-skinned doesn't mean they're the same people. Same thing with Albions. Just because they're light-skinned doesn't mean they're the same people. All right? And so one of the things that we have to start recognizing is that we're going to start respecting people for the content of their character, as Dr. Martin Luther King would say. Because just because somebody is dark-skinned does not mean that they are necessarily for you. And let's also recognize that there is a battle going on spiritually. And so you got to know the history. You see, we talk about the Bible and a lot of people, oh, the Bible is just allegorical. Everything is allegorical. Everything in your life is allegorical. Does that mean it did not happen? No, it doesn't. And so, yeah, there's allegory in the Bible. And, and no, the Bible is not the perfect word of God. It's not. I've gone over that. However, there is historical value. There's historical accuracy in the stories in the Bible. Not 100%, because I already told you the Bible is copyrighted. What's so what, Diva, if the Bible is copyrighted? Well, who, who has the right to copyright God's word? If it's the perfect word of God, who has the right to copyright God's word? Well, nobody, because it belongs to everybody. However, when you change the stories of God's word, then it becomes your word. And then you can copyright it. Well, then that makes it not perfect. Okay. So we're not going into that because I go into history on this. But I, I need y'all to understand this. There is historical accuracy in the scriptures. All right. And yes, that stuff happened. And so when you're go, getting back to the spiritual side, even in that book. There are dark-skinned people. There are two sets of dark-skinned people fighting against each other. And we're going to name them right now. The Egyptians and the Israelites. And it's not to say that they were fighting, but the Egyptians, dark-skinned people, enslaved the Israelites, dark-skinned people. 
Do y'all think it, the only time it happened was back then? No, because it happened in the land known as America in the 1400s. A group of people came into the, no, the uh, land known as America's, Moors, so-called Europeans, and they enslaved the original people of the land, so-called Indians, the people who call themselves uh, black and Negro today. Well, guess what? These people over here call themselves black and Negro too because they forgot, just like these people forgot who they were. The original people of the land, brown-skinned, copper-colored people. People coming from the land known as, that we know of as today as Africa and Middle East. They were, they were dark-skinned people. The Europeans, they were dark-skinned people who enslaved the original people of the land. They want y'all to think that the so-called forefathers and founders of America were Albion. They were not. That's why they don't tell you about the Continental Congress. That's why they don't tell you about the presidents that came before uh, George Washington. But when we start doing our research and we start getting deep into this history, then the truth comes out. So if y'all ready for the truth, y'all need to go to unauniversity.com and let's get on it, baby. Let's get on it because we're going to tell the truth about what went down in history. But I'm warning you. I'm warning you. It is not pretty for anybody. Not melanated people, not the Moors, because it's one of the things people try to do, uh, you know, with respect to the Moors. They try to play the Moors up like they were pristine people. They were kind and they were loving. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. And, and, and when we're talking about the Albion and how they got here, everybody's so focused on where it couldn't have been, you know, this many slave ships and it took this long. To the, why y'all didn't stop to ask how so many Albions got over here? We know they're not from here. How so many of them get over here? To the point where they outnumber melanated people. How'd that happen? Yeah, that was a slave trade. And y'all got to understand, go look up the Barbary treaties and understand what the cargo was. Look up white cargo. Look up white slaves in America. Look up why the treaties needed to come forth in the first place. Well, they, what happened was uh, once the Moors got in here, they were shipping slaves into uh, the Americas. All right. Who were those slaves? They were Albions. They were kidnapping them as children from Sicily, from Ireland, from other lands like that where they had shipped them from South America into other continents where the, it was cooler for them because they couldn't take the topography in South America, which is where they were created. All right. So we go into this history a lot more. I got to get out of here because I got a session to go to. I want y'all to know I love y'all. Uh, thank y'all for following. What's my native tongue? That is English, my friend. Uh, Reggie and Lou Will and Buckeye, thank you all for joining. Uh, Marilyn, uh, who else? And Marilyn says that makes sense. Da says so true. Esau is our twin brother. Ark says yes. Okay. Uh, good point. Uh, Esau is a twin to the Israelites. All right. And so if you consider yourself an Israelite, then again, Esau supposedly is the Albion today, supposedly. All right. So there's a lot of uh, thoughts about Esau and where Esau came from, but I can tell you this. According to history and according to science, there was a light-skinned being that was created in what we know of as South America today, is what we know of as uh, Argentina, all right? And they were shipped out of here to other lands because it's still hot. It's hot down there. They can't take it. That's why I told y'all yesterday they shut down everything from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock. They go in the house They can't because they can't take the heat. So... Anyway, we'll go into that uh, as we go into more history here. If you're wanting to join the seminars, I want you to go to unauniversity.com and uh, join up, all right, so we can get you in road, all right? We got a lot coming uh, this season. I want y'all to know I love you. I'm Diva Larie. Uh, we're building. We're building. We're building. We're building. Hey, y'all who are watching this, welcome to the new dimension, baby. Welcome. You have arrived, all right, and we're going to go into it as we talk about self-mastery, as we talk about history, as we talk about 
getting you set up so that you can have your umbrella corporation and stand under your own jurisdiction. I'm yours truly, D. Blurie. I love you, YouTube. I'm yours truly, D. Blurie. I love you, TikTok. I'm out. I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. I'll be back. I'll be back. I love y'all. I'm out. Bye. Peace. Peace. Yes, 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 yes.